Hello, trainers, for new volunteer training or JA material pickup. Champions, I am very grateful for your help in your community to make sure our volunteers are set up for success and feel comfortable in the classroom. Yesterday, I shipped out uh, a kit like this to every single champion hosting kit pickup. This training is specifically just to go over what's inside that kit, what's needed when, etc. I want you guys to feel ready to host new volunteer training or material pickup. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of deep dive into the box as a whole, and we're going to go step by step of what is all involved, go over in-depth kit distribution and in-depth volunteer training. The first thing you'll see when you open your kit is you will see a thank you item from Junior Achievement, a supply bag, and then this box material content. This is going to tell you everything that's inside that kit and what it's used for, but we're going to go over it today. So the first thing that's going to be in your folders, there's going to be four folders. The first one is setup and logistics. The first thing you're going to see is the training sites, locations, times, etc. for new volunteer training and past volunteer kit pickup. So this is kind of for your knowledge so you can know um, everything that's going on across the state. You can also find this if a volunteer calls and wants to know where this is. Um, they did get it in their assignment email or you can find it on our website. If you just go to our website and then go under community served, find your community and they can either click on kit pickup uh, or JA volunteer training. The next thing is you are gonna find blue JA arrow signs. This is to help you um, set up in case maybe where a volunteer training is or kit pickup is, is not right when someone walks in the front door. Um, these arrows are to help volunteers find their way to where they need to be. Next, I've given each area three blank volunteer conduct standards. Um, just in case someone were to come and say, hey, I needed to sign that document, um, feel free to get that signed. Also at new volunteer training, they might um, want them as well. So I did include those. If you have um, any signed, I'll talk about it on the next slide, but we want to make sure that you return them to me right away. The last thing in this folder is two return envelopes. Um, in this, um, I'm going to need all the things for new volunteer training. So the sign up, any volunteer conduct standards, um, the week after uh, kit pickup, I would love any registration forms you have. And then we give you a second folder because maybe a few weeks down the road when you've handed out more kits, you can send those registration forms. We'll talk about it um, when we get to the kit pickup folder, but the registration forms um, just say that the volunteer picked up and has secured their kit. This helps me know what kits are out and what kits are still at the location. So please um, don't wait to send those registration forms. You can also scan them to me if you don't wanna mail them. Our next folder is the volunteer list folder. This is gonna show any open classes that you have. Again, this was at the time that I printed. So any open classes, if you don't have this list, you don't have any open classes. Then we have all the volunteers teaching sorted by alpha. Then we have all the volunteers teaching sorted by community. And then we have a list of all the team teachers. This list is very, very important if you are hosting material pickup. People who are teaching only receive one kit. So you'll need to go through on the registration form. It will say if they're team teaching, you'll need to put both registration forms together and put them inside one kit. Again, they only get one kit. If they need an extra volunteer guidebook, they can let me know and I can send them one. Our next folder is the registration forms folder, which is again for kit pickup. There's a kit pickup process 
document right inside. Then you'll have a bunch of registration forms. Green are gonna be brand new volunteers. These should mostly go to training. So all new volunteers will pick up their kits at training. However, not every site is hosting a training because they only have one or two new volunteers. So then you would keep those. Yellow is past volunteers. If you have any alternates, those are in blue. And then I just sent you some gray forms that are blank. If you have someone coming in who you know, says, hey, I'm supposed to pick up my kit, I'm brand new, um, feel free to have them fill out a registration form. You can give them a kit, but then send that to me right away so I can verify. There are some programs that do not require kits to be picked up. Um, so JA Titan, JA Invest for your future, JA It's My Job, JA All About Cars, and JA Career Speaker Series. So if you have any of those, um, just know when someone comes in and say, hey, I'm needing one of these, uh, they don't have an actual kit to pick up. Everything is emailed by us. Okay, so you are in charge of material pickup. This is probably one of the most important processes because we want to make sure that every volunteer gets the correct kit. So you can see on the registration form, it will say the community they're teaching and all their contact information, name, home address, phone number, email. What we want you to do is we want them to fill that out to completion. So if we're missing maybe a home address, have them fill it out. If we're missing a cell phone number or a work phone number, have them fill that out. Then on the, on the bottom, you'll see circled in red, it will say what program they're teaching. So this particular volunteer is teaching second grade JAR community. What you're gonna do then is you are gonna go to your kits and note JAR community on the front of the kit. You're gonna open up that little clear pouch, stick the registration form inside and tie it back up. Please, please double check that the name on the registration form, the JAR community and the program name on the material matches because again if they get the wrong kit then that can have lasting effects um, where we have to trade kits or maybe next year the students might get the same program so we want to make sure that that is correct if they're team teaching it would say it right next to the school name um, so it would say you know their program name their school and then it, who their team teacher is so please be on the lookout for that again any team teachers you're going to put the registration forms together and put them both inside one kit if someone else um, picks up the kit, you're gonna just write on the bottom, kit picked up by person on this date. And one, let's say someone comes in to pick up their kit, there's two things you need to do. You can see um, from the higher up red arrow, you need to X indicating that that kit was picked up. And then the volunteer needs to sign the bottom right. Again, or this is very imperative because then we know this kit was picked up. So let's say you're not hosting a uh, kit pickup, but you're hosting training. So new volunteer training is very important. This is the first uh, kind of interaction that these volunteers are gonna have with Junior Achievement and we want to make it a good one. You have your own folder with everything you're gonna need. If your community has um, opted not to host new volunteer training because you only have one or two new volunteers, your folder will simply say, no new volunteers or um, your volunteers will be trained by South Dakota staff. So you don't have to worry about anything. If your community is hosting training, you will have JA pens and name tags. You'll have a list of all the new volunteers. I cannot guarantee all these volunteers will show up to training, but I did send a list of all the new volunteers who could potentially show up. You also might have past volunteers show up just wanting a refresher. Um, so although you might not have their kit, you can feel free to check them in as well. Then I sent you um, how to access the Zoom platform, a sign-in sheet. Every single volunteer will need to sign in because that's how they'll get credit for training. Please have them print their name so it is legible. Because again, this is how I am going to mark them as trained. This is the document that you will scan or mail back to me after training. Then I sent you a list of all the uh, of the volunteer packets. So this is the packet that I'm going to be going over. They can take notes on this, um, et cetera. Uh, and then I sent you a script of the PowerPoint I'm going to be working off of. This is just in case something were to happen, technology were to go down, and you would to need to host training on your own. You can know exactly what I'm going to say. 
You also have some um, arrow signs in there. You can grab the supply bag. You can grab the green kit forms, maybe some blank VCSs, um, just in case. Those are some things that you're also going to need that are outside the training folder. So new volunteer training this year is held Tuesday, October 24th. Arrival time, so this is what time you should be getting to your host room. We want it to be 2.30 or 1.30 Mountain Time. Um, registration volunteers should start coming at 2.45 or 1.45, so please make sure you are set up and ready to go by then. Please log on to Zoom at 2.50 or 1.50 Mountain Time because I will need 10 minutes to troubleshoot. We're gonna have people logging in. It's gonna be kind of a lot right away. Um, so please log in early. Then training is three to five central or two to four mountain. So again, if you're not hosting new volunteer training, those, those uh, volunteers are gonna log in on their own. If uh, you are hosting training, um, then you're gonna log on to Zoom and host those new volunteers. So, for training, the biggest thing is I'm going to need you to rename your Zoom to your community. So J Aberdeen area, Mitchell, Rapid City. Um, this is going to help me know that you guys are on. I know exactly who's hosting training and I want to make sure that you are all on and um, can access everything and can see my screen, etc. So if you haven't done it before, I know we're all a little more familiar with Zoom now, but um, if you just log on, on the top right, you'll see three dots. You click on that, click rename, and then you would put in your community name. Um, you can also use the chat feature to talk. Um, I would love for you to have your screens on so I can see you, um, but I will be muting everyone, so you will have to use the chat. During the new volunteer training, I'm going to be going over the digital program, so how to access all the digital resources. I'm going to be going over a tutorial of our website just to kind of show off all the different um, resources we have on there so volunteers can feel more successful. And then I will be going over how to access digital programs. There's a whole page we have, so I'm going to be kind of going through that as well. So the whole process of me will take um, a little over an hour. Once I am logged off, I really want you to spend some time with your volunteers. So let's just say we're logging on and Zoom doesn't work. What should you do? This is why I have you log on 10 minutes early because you're going to have to call the state office and we're going to have you troubleshoot for a little bit. If for some reason you're still not getting on and it's time to roll, um, feel free to use that plan B and pull out that PowerPoint and do it yourself. Again, I'm just gonna need to know um, who, who is um, at training. The bottom one says wrap up and thank you the thank the volunteers and best practices. This is gonna be very important. Again, I need you to spend about 30 minutes with the volunteers going through their kit, answering any questions having, um, telling stories about what it's like to teach. We want you to help them feel set up for success, feel fostered, and really enjoying their experience. So it'll look like an overview of JA, then I'm going to do a preparing you for the classroom, and then that valuable time is with you guys. Please, please don't just rush them off. Um, again, I say training goes until five, um, it probably won't for my end. So I want to give you guys time to really, really foster these new volunteers. Okay, so that's kind of what's in your kit, a little bit about material pickup and a little bit about new volunteer training. So again, after training, you're gonna either scan or mail to me any completed registration forms from material pickup the attendance sheet for new volunteer training and any completed volunteer conduct standard form. Then once kit pickups been rolling a little bit, again, you're gonna mail me or scan to me any registration forms that are filled out and any VCSs. Again, this is really just to make sure we have some open communication so I am up to date of who's picked up their kit, who has not, who needs to be trained because I'm sending out those reminders constantly. So I need to know who's picked up their kit. So even if it's an email of everyone who's picked up their kit or everyone who attended training, I need some form of communication letting me know so I don't send those people a reminder when they've already attended. 
Okay, that's it. I hope um, you feel set up for success. If you have any questions before next Tuesday, please, please do not hesitate to reach out and let me know. I am happy to um, help you in any way and make sure you feel um, ready to host new volunteer training or host kit pickup. Thanks.